Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 4, Episodes 7 and 8. Okay, I know this show now has a history of killing characters we're like. Also, spoilers. <laughs> but I have a feeling they're not going to kill Crow. Just because of how they're setting him up, the misfortune he's bringing to Ruby and them is the fact that he's now injured and with them. Yes, so now they know he's around and they have to take responsibility to care for him, which is going to slow their group down even more. Ah, uh, but back to the first episode. That fight was just as awesome as I was expecting it to be. <laughs> Maybe a smidge more. A smidge more. Just a little bit. Because, you know, at first I thought Crow figured something out when he temporarily lost his scythe. Mm-hmm. But it was just that misfortune thing coming into play, especially when Ruby almost got hit by the piece of wood from the building. Yes, the falling beam. Brings a whole new light into it. Yes, and him explaining his semblance now s explains why he kept telling Ruby to stay back. She needed to be outside of his radius of influence. Mm -hmm. But the misfortune also happened to the scorpion guy. I suddenly can't remember his name, but I don't care. <laughs> uh, it started with a T and it was like Tyrion or something? Yeah. Need to look that name up later, because they usually put hints in the names of the characters. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that fight, like I said, was awesome as I thought it would be, especially when Crow comes flying out of the old building and s uses his sword to stop himself and stands on it really coolly. One of my uh, favorite visual moments of the fight. And speaking of visual moments, that fire in the next episode was really well done. Yes, uh, going back to the first episode, that rug in Oscar's room, amazingly detailed. Mm hmm And that's definitely Ozpin. It sure sounds like him, which is really awkward. And how did Ozpin end up latching on to this Oscar guy? And even though it's kind of possible and not really likely, I know our personal theories have Ozpin pegged as the sorcerer, magician, wizard, what have you, that gave the maidens their powers, but the maiden powers can technically go to a guy, so... And they said it was problematic the last time a maiden gave it to a guy. Yes, yeah, so is Ozpin actually a maiden and now trying to force Oscar to be another one? And knowing that it was problematic for the power to go to a guy, if this is true, why Oscar? How did Osbin even know about Oscar if any of this is remotely true? Yeah, especially since the kid doesn't seem to recognize him. <gasps> because it's random if there's no one chosen. Remember that clause? So if Osbin wasn't thinking of anyone, it's totally random. But why would it be a guy again? Because it's usually a girl and it's been problematic when it was a guy. This is the problematic part. It always goes to a guy after this point. Because Osbin says someone before him, and I bet you it was another guy. Probably. Oh, this is going to get even more awkward. Yeah, this is interesting, because we were like, wait a minute. We didn't even think about this stuff until we started talking. <laughs> this is why we enjoy talking. Well, we do usually have a little pre-discussion before we turn the recording on. Stuff sometimes doesn't hit us until we're, air quotes, live. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that makes so much sense now. That's why it's problematic. Ospin probably wasn't the first guy, but that's the problem. Ever since then, it's been a guy. Which is to their advantage, because I don't think Salem realizes this. Mm, if Salem doesn't know, and Ospin is part of the Maiden line, and is now pushing Oscar to be the next Maiden, Salem isn't going to be looking for a guy. She's looking for four girls. And since Salem is specifically right now looking for the Spring Maiden, if we're going to put labels on, let's say maybe Spring? Probably. So, yeah, I think we just have another theory, people. I'm going to add that into the tags below. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. So enough fan theory speculation for the moment. Back to the actual episodes. Mm-hmm. I want to stab both the father and the son in the back repeatedly, multiple times, saying, you know what you have done? Slowly and quietly into their ears. <laughs> you have hurt a fair young maiden. Uh, 
yes, I'm a violent person when it comes to people hurting innocent people. <laughs> mm. Wise is not innocent. They are treating her wrongly and unfairly. And Wise is going to bring about their destruction herself. Simply by being herself. Because now she's probably going to run off. Which does or does not fall into her father's plans. It does because she's gone and obviously because she left the safety of Atlas. She's off her rocker. I don't think she's leaving quite yet. Based on the intro and the fact that she moved furniture out of the way, I think she's going to start practicing her summons. Yeah, she's going to be working on it and she's going to be prepared and she's going to take them down and she's going to leave. I don't think she's going to take them down and leave. I think she's going to talk to Ironwood. That's why we saw those Ironwood shuttles flying by. I think she's going to either sneak onto one of them or talk to Ironwood and Ironwood's going to take her. Well, Ironwood would gladly take her because we already had the conversation where he said that she would always be welcome at the Atlas Academy. Mm -hmm. So he would gladly take her, even against her father's wishes, because Ironwood already acts against Mr. I married into the Snee family. And yes, but they are going, those two are going to get their comeuppance. It's going to be because of Wise. It may not be Wise directly because, you know, just going and sicking her summons on them, as satisfying as that would be, is not going to get her what she needs. Mm -hmm. Also, not all the staff is loyal to him. I actually have a feeling very few staff is loyal to him and the son. Very few. So most of them will help her. At the very least, the one who we've already seen interact with Wise will definitely help her. But most of the staff will probably help her, or at the very least, not hinder her. You know, those who are afraid won't help her, but they probably won't hinder her as long as they can keep it quiet. This is why you treat staff well. Also, all of his language is completely wrong for someone who actually cares about his family. Because all of it was me, 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 me. When he talks about the family, he's talking about himself. That's not the way you phrase family. <laughs> No. And a nice dichotomy. The two sets of father-daughter moments mm -hmm. with Wise and her father as opposed to Blake and her father. And I like how Blake says, yes, my friends would disagree about that when fathers always take time to listen to their daughters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, no, fathers are never too busy for their daughters. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Specifically, one in particular that I want to... Well, no, I'm not going to kill him. I'm going to torture him slowly by making him watch Barney videos. Ooh, harsh. That or Teletubbies, or both, back and forth, so he doesn't get used to one or the other. Um, I was just thinking about throwing him into a chat room that was having a flame war. <laughs> He'd enjoy that too much, I think. He'd get right in the middle of it. It has to be something so lovey-dovey sweet and sacred that he can't stand it, and that will eventually slowly blame... Lane, that will eventually slowly brainwash him into like singing the song out of nowhere the whole i love you you love me thing mm -hmm. mm, yeah yeah but what's really going to destroy him is to have his reputation ruined and the snee family survive mm -hmm. that's what i need to have happen i don't think it's going to happen especially because of the world of remnant episode where it's heavily hinted at that Wise is definitely the true heir. Also, I don't think the son is a legitimate heir. I don't think he was born. I think he came with the father. Interesting thought, but if that's the case, how did the father convince the mother to marry him with that kind of baggage? Or did the son show up later? Here's another idea. Based on how much the mother is drinking, at least I should just say based on how much it's implied she's drinking, I think the way he married in was he killed the person she was actually in love with. Possible. Because of how evil he is and that phrasing he used. Do you know what I've done to keep the family's name? Possible. Also, she could be heavily drinking because it came up later that he had Whitley out of wedlock. So he could have been cheating on her with somebody else and the father. Hmm. Possible, but something about the setup says that he's not a true heir. And this is the only way he's making an heir. 
he's going to be an heir. Or there's a clause somewhere that says it can only be females unless it's given up. I don't think generationally there's been enough yet to have that type of clause in, but it looks like the inheritance goes to the oldest and Winter took herself out of it by being military. So that made Wise the heiress. And now her father is faking that she revoked that right and handed it over to Whitley. So is there anyone who would question that enough that we need to have the forged documents? Or does he just get to say this and get away with it? Because really it's the Snee family, who is really going to care? I also don't think this is going to be resolved in this season. I think this season is a setup for what's going to happen, and this is going to continue into the next season. Yeah, it would be way too fast to have it resolved in one season, especially since Weiss has been having issues with her father throughout the entirety of the series. Yeah, but I have a feeling by the end of this season, she's definitely going to leave the house. She kind of has to, because it's heavily implied that by the end of this season, the four members of Team Ruby will at least see each other again. Mm -hmm. Even if they do not reform as a team, they will at least cross paths. And the only way that can happen is if all team members start moving again. I like the info dump that basically was the second episode. Well, I think it was interesting that we were going, oh, we get to have two episodes this time. And they basically work the world of Remnant into the episode. And it's like the way the um, second episode starts, it's almost like all of those world of Remnants we saw were actually him telling them. Really could be because of the way... It was phrased in the information we were given and the information it's implied that they received through the dialogue that we did hear. So anything in the second episode that you really wanted to talk about? Because my brain is blanking on the second episode other than you're not going to die, Crow. I won't let you die, Crow. <laughs> Crow's not going to die because if he died, they could bury him and pick their speed back up. As long as he's alive and injured, he hampers them more, which is the greater misfortune to their overall mission, as opposed to a personal misfortune, which would be his death. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we mentioned it yet. I might have mentioned it in the misfortune of the fact that the guy's tail got cut off. <laughs> that was awesome. I, but, though I'm wondering, will he grow it back? And going back to that fight, we I think this might be what you were touching on. Uh, you know, we do try to keep our episodes pretty clean, but that was wonderful use of profanity yes that specific use of the b word there Mhm. Mm also notice how he says he talked to himself and says she's gonna forgive me and i'm like no she's not <laughs> she really is not she does not accept failure Mhm. Mm though she probably won't outright kill him she's probably gonna send him back out because he will give her the information that crows along with them and I have a feeling she knows about Crow. She also knows about his semblance and probably tells him that you're going to have an easier time. Just be careful of. Yes, because there's no point in discarding him if he's still useful because Salem is very much a manipulator. Mm -hmm. That is really interesting. Also, I'm wondering where she came from, because is she a Grim? Was she the first creation the Dark Brother made before he started making all the other Grim? Or did he make her and she make the Grim? Yeah, because it sounds like she's been around for a long time. Like, longer than an average human lifespan. Mm-hmm. And I know it was kind of a summary, quick thing of that story, but it almost seemed like the Dark Brother turned a little too quickly to go, oh yes, I'll make something with you, brother. So I think something happened there, and she might be the other thing that he created yes because with the dark brothers destructive tendencies you would think that he would be fine with continuing to go on with this and destroy his brother's creations or is he getting tired of the light brother always coming back and restoring life like i said i know it was a really summary but it seemed like it was too quick of a turn for the shadow brother i think is a better way to call him Yes, uh, Shadow Brother is a good phrasing. At the same time, that's not the first time that I've heard in fantasy stories humans being given the light-dark choice. 
shoot, I'm blanking on the name of the series now. Darn it. It's a series of dragon books. I wasn't, obviously you can tell I haven't read them a million times like some of my other books. I'll look it up after and we'll put it in the annotations. But in the series Legend, the historical legends, mythos of the universe, there were dark creatures that were given to chaos. And they were given their own separate dimension. There were dragons who chose the path of light and were given gifts to sustain that path of light. There was a species that refused to choose and they faded out of existence. And then there were humans who made their choice the ability to choose. So that did come to mind during this World of Remnant style story about having the power to choose the light path or the dark path. I really like these episodes because they are full of stuff like that. And going back to a particular episode where during the storytelling, I'm like, yeah, Crow's really badly injured. Why isn't anyone doing I know he said he was okay, it was just a flesh wound, but couldn't you tell that tail was a scorpion tail and it might have been a good idea to, I don't know, head to the nearest village and get a healer or poison person. Also, why is he coughing up purple? instead of red and why is the wound bleeding purple well if you notice when ruby cut the tail what the liquid that came out was purple so what got into the wound was purple what's circulating through his system is purple mm -hmm. <sighs> well may as well ask the usual question any nitpicks <laughs> oh no i really enjoyed these two episodes and I like how John is resentful and resistant and going I can't believe this not in the I don't believe it but in the this is the action that you took this is the secrecy this is what helped cost Pyrrha her life yeah that was really realistic I just hope they didn't go too far with it also another thing that you talking about the story stuff reminded me of especially to the, back to the stuff that was actually gone over in the episode about the four elements that every human has but doesn't have. And if anyone could get all four, I'm like, is this going to be another one of those stories that you had it all along? I really hope not because the relics are physical objects. Yeah, but apparently all these gifts were given to humans as well, all humans. So maybe these are the most concentrated version of these elements and each individual person has a lighter version of it. This also might explain John. He might either have one of these elements greater than anyone else, or he has a greater concentration of all four. Or there could be some way that the element is actually physically embedded in his body. That too. But something's important about John. We've known that for a while. We're still waiting to find out exactly what. I mean, he's an awesome character. He's a good tactician. He has a good heart. His fighting skills are really coming along. But we don't really know what his semblance is, and we don't know what that little spark is that we're going to see later. And the stuff they're bringing up now makes me wonder, like, does it have something to do with these elements now that they've just brought up? Is that what's special about him? Also, random question out of nowhere. In a world filled with Grimm, who took the time to move those logs around a circle of rocks to build a fire? Because those logs were too uniform. <laughs> and they had moss in them, so they've obviously been there for a while. Well, maybe the logs were already fallen and had moss on them, and the group just moved them to border the campsite. I guess it's just a random question of like, huh. <laughs> I know it's good for the story setting and everything, but that's odd. Mm -hmm. And going to your nitpicks, son, that was not enough information to give Blake's mother. Yeah. You say, White Fang Ninja going after Blake. I'm pretty sure... That Blake's mom knows how to fight. I'm positive Blake's father knows how to fight. At the very least, if you're going to run off, you need to let someone know where you're going. Also, White Fang Ninja? I think she may be a reptile type. I'm almost guessing, just because she's a ninja, a chameleon? Just something about the way her hair curled? Could very much be possible. We'll find out when Blake catches her. Mm-hmm. Assuming female here. Well, yeah, based on the body type, it... I'm pretty sure it's a female or a very nice looking young boy. Mask? You can't assume young. I'm talking about the body type. Because it's rare to find a full grown man that damn pretty. <laughs> Gacked. 
Yeah. Um, but I think the mom actually got the gist. Probably because she's been talking with Sun long enough, that, which was a nice touch. Like, I'm going to go back to listen to this Ruby. <laughs> More stories about Team Ruby. I would be like, Mom, please know, God, what is Sun telling her? Also, don't show him my baby pictures. <laughs> it's a classic mom trope. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, but it was probably time for us to wrap things up. Any final thoughts? The animation just keeps getting better and better. I mean, we talk specifically about the fire and the rug, but the light effects, the motion, their overall frame rate seems like it's really good. It's always been a fun show and great to watch. I know fun is a relative term when we have all this darkness, mm -hmm. but just the visual quality keeps going up and the story just keeps getting more complex and more engaging. And the nice thing about shows that are animated like this, they'll actually improve over time, especially as the animators get used to the new software. They'll figure out new tricks along the way to help improve their quality, their efficiency, little tweaks they'll figure out to do with the lighting. Yeah, well, the lighting on Ruby and that one scene near the end where we have the close-up on her face, just the lighting on that looked really nice. And we held that for a good three seconds, it was like... Oh, that would make, like, a good wallpaper. Well, I think it might be available on YouTube eventually in 4K. I can't remember what they were using it as on YouTube. I know it's either 720p or 1080p. And I know it's, like, 1080p on the Ruby website itself, on the Rooster, Rooster Teeth, Teeth website. Sorry, Ruby's mostly what we care about. Yeah, there's just so much of Red vs. Blue. I watched it back when it was first coming out. And then I got busy, so I've never had a chance to catch up on it. I got a lot more of other things to catch up on. <laughs> uh, well, I'm really enjoying where they're going with this, and I'm really liking the animation. Did you have more? Because I think I might have put you off there. <laughs> a little bit, because I'm going overall into the story development, because back in the beginning, even though we had certain hints like Silver Eyes and Huntresses and Grimm, there's been a build up and it doesn't feel like all of a sudden we're coming out of left field that we have these relics and they're important even though we didn't hear about them in the beginning it feels more like a progression instead of that oh this is a retcon it doesn't feel like that it feels like a progression it's not where i would have imagined the story going when i watched the initial trailers and the early episodes but it doesn't feel like they're just trying to force things especially through a lot of the behind the scenes stuff we watched and it sounds like the creators planned this all out from the beginning they have it all like written down which is really good so i don't know if that means they have an end planned but they at least they have at least the first several seasons planned out because we know how things can be influenced by how popular they are yeah Yu-Gi-Oh. i was just about to say cough Yu-Gi-Oh cough <laughs> But yeah, overall, I'm really liking where they're going. It's going dark. I really like that the fact they set it up so you can question whether or not Crow will actually live because they actually killed off people. Yeah, so there's no real, you know, main, semi-main, any guaranteed character protection because they've already proven that they can and will kill off characters. The story's what's important, which should be the thing. If the story's not important in a show, it lessens it a little bit. It's still going to be enjoyable, but if you're writing a story to have the story tell a story, and you're not willing to let the story do things it needs to do to give the story enough impact, and I know I'm saying story a lot, <laughs> it can't be a real powerful story. Like, if you hold it back as, as an author and you're like, I don't really want a character to die. No, and we go through a lot pushing our characters near death, and we usually just can't take that final step because we care about our characters so much and that's a hard thing to allow the story to manipulate your characters and to allow the story to do what it needs to do to tell itself and they really seem to be doing that here and that's one of the reasons it's so nice and it's such an enjoyable thing to watch well, I can't wait for the next episode. I wonder if we're going to get another episode, World of Remnant, or are we going to get two more episodes? Well, with our theory of 
all the stuff that we've been seeing in the World of Remnant episodes being Crow telling the kids the story, we may be done with World of Remnant for a little while because he's now gotten them caught up. I'm just trying to wonder who we're going to focus on next in the next two episodes because they seem to like focus specifically on a certain set of characters, even though we're getting hints at the others. They usually is a main focus. Well, we didn't see Yang at all in these two episodes, so I would pick Yang. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to go back to a Yang-Blake focus of the next two episodes. Especially since Blake ran off after a ninja. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 4, Episodes 7 and 8. If you've enjoyed this, please click the subscribe button. It will probably be, not the words, but a circle next to it with our pretty faces on it. Also, if you want to watch more of our thoughts on Ruby, there should be a link to the playlist here somewhere. But if you've enjoyed my art, you can see more of it on my DeviantArt, Tumblr, and Twitter. And if you've enjoyed my art enough to get some of your own, I do do commissions, or you can just donate some money through my Patreon, and that gives me more opportunities to continue to draw such work as you've seen on this episode. If you don't want to sign up for a Patreon account, Lux also has a coffee account. No sign up required? Simply use his PayPal. Works in $3 increments. Also, if you've enjoyed our discussion here and you'd like to join in, engage us in the comments below. Please be nice.